Hi, everyone. I was asked to do this in English, so I'll try. Um, how do I start this? So I'll spend a few minutes uh, talking about uh, Lumos and what we do. I'll be short about that. And then I'll speak about the Cleantech Open experience, what it did for us. I'm sure it's a very individual experience. Um, we'll talk a bit about what it did for us and what happened to us in the last year. And I think the Cleantech Open is a part of this puzzle. One and a half billion people in the world don't have access to electricity, um, mostly in Africa and Southeast Asia, but also in other parts. These people do uh, consume power and pay for it. They buy kerosene and buy candles on a daily basis to light their homes. The World Bank and the UN estimate that this spend on average is half a dollar per family per day. This is huge. It's uh, lighting of this sort for half a dollar per day, we're, we're paying much less on modern electricity. They also buy electricity per se. They have uh, mo uh, modern cellular phones. Um, it's amazing, but 80% of the population has mo uh, cellular phones, and these people without electricity need to charge their phones. To, so they walk to central charging locations, pay 20 to 30 cents per charge, and walk back home. Again, the poorest of the poor are overpaying because my cellular phone costs 0 0.1 cent per charge. They're paying 20 to 30 cents, and they spend half a day doing it. What we're doing in Lumos is basically a home unit, and we call ourselves a distributed utility. We want to sell electricity instead of selling generation assets. We think that selling generation assets is the wrong approach to people who don't have the money to afford them and we're going to sell them electricity. We're going to give these units away for free, almost free, small commitment fee. The units include a panel and an indoor unit, but the panel is not a regular panel, it's a secure panel. And the security comes in the sense that it doesn't operate unless there's authorization. I'm the one who gives the authorization, and the authorization is given only after payment. Payment is done through the mobile phone, which 80% of the people have. So we're working with mobile operators to distribute this and to sell this in Africa today and tomorrow in Southeast Asia. How will it work? The person will go to the same place where he bought his cellular phone, pick up a small a Lumos kit for a small commitment fee. He bought his cellular phone for $25. Our kit will cost him $30. He will take this kit home, install it by himself. It's a do-it-yourself kind of thing. It's as easy as putting the panel on the roof, the indoor unit in the home and connecting them with a the cable, plug and play. He will use the cellular phone in an existing mobile account, it's usually a prepaid account, to pay half a dollar per day or three dollars per week, and then we will open the panel to give him electricity. The system provides enough electricity to light two or three lights, to charge two to three sol uh, sol uh, cellular panels, uh, sorry, cellular phones, to use a small radio, a TV, a PC, or a fan. Of course, he can do 30 to 40 phones if he decides to open up a shop to charge his friend's cell phones. Or he can do only TV for four hours if he wants to see the football match. It's a lease-to-own model, so after five years, if he paid for five years, he gets the electricity from now on for free. We believe that by then he will want a second and third panel to add it on and to get more electricity, more power, to use more devices. Last but not least, for future value add, we have a cellular modem in the home. We can provide Wi-Fi, we can provide IPTV, and we can do some other things we're thinking about. So that's who we are. The CleanTech Open for us. I like this picture because I think it's the... Lumos is my third startup. So I know a bit about how startups act, and, and this picture is, is, is the beginning of the life of a startup. There's a lot of preparation going on, a lot of uh, thinking, a lot of doing, but in a confined way, and then you start running. And there's a marathon after this picture, or maybe a few marathons, but, but, but this is the beginning. And, and the CleanTech Open for us was this. We were preparing, we were working, we were probably working for seven or eight months before the CleanTech Open. But it was very small and very confined. We had a couple of engineers 
We had myself and my co-founder, Davidi, working, thinking, talking to people. I think we met Avi before, or Avi's organization before we met. We started talking, we started thinking, we started developing, but it wasn't really out there. It was in hiding, not because of the hiding, but, but just because that's the way it is. And the Clinic Tech Open was, was our announcement to ourselves and to the world that we're actually there and, and becoming a company. I think it gave us recognition. A few people thought that this was interesting enough and, uh, and, and worthwhile. It gave us contacts in the sense that in Israel we met people, but more importantly outside Israel when we went to the global we met many, many people. Um, and that's important for you guys, whomever um, will win and, and the people who will not win. Use these interactions and contacts. We still have contacts that we met people a year ago in the Silicon Valley and um, that we're keeping in contact today and w something will happen with them. I don't know if it will be tomorrow or a year from now. And of course, we're the support. You know, the Clean Tech Open was part of this puzzle. I don't know what exactly did everything and there's many parts of this puzzle, but financing wise, we started before the Clean Tech Open, we were financed in seed money. Now we've raised a significant A round, a, a big A round, more than we thought we would raise. Uh, product development, we had a PowerPoint back then and a uh, few thoughts about uh, prototypes or uh, some elements of the prototype. Now our products are working. Customers, now we have, by the end of the year, we're launching two pilots in Guinea, Conakry, and in Nigeria with uh, major mobile operators uh, in these uh, territories and beyond these territories. And marketing and industry recognition, um, I think we're starting to meet people and to know people and Ruzgar I know for a while already and um, we're part of the, the same ecosystem. I want to finish with, uh, with the finance minister of Nigeria. We met her already a few times, um, but uh, a week after we met her for the first time, um, she went to Harvard Business School to give a speech about Africa and the future of Africa. Um, a few words of background, Nigeria, 160 million people, more than 100 million don't have electricity. Um, Ms. Ngozi, or Dr. Ngozi, uh, used to be the managing director of the World Bank, Harvard grad, MIT grad, a smart person. This is what she had to say about us. Well, <laughs> if we had volume, this would be what she said. I'll, I'll give a few quotes. Uh, an idea which I fell in love with, I thought it was, a, it was a very, very clever idea, and she even says to the people, go and search them at uh, novalumos.com. That's it. Thank you.